Veterans Day is a time to honor all of our members in the military. Yes, it is. But what about all of their families, especially the families that are left behind? And this is Chick to Chick. You know, Flora, we talk an awful lot about our military members who are serving, whether they're here in our country and away from their families, or they're serving abroad and they're deployed. And I think sometimes we don't talk a lot about the families that are at home, the mom, the dad that's holding down the fort at home. And now we're in a pandemic. So it just seems like really good time to listen to a family or more and what they're going through right now. Yeah, we do want to say thank you for your service to members of the military. Thank you for the sacrifices that you're making. They do make a tremendous sacrifice. They're leaving home for long periods of time. But as you mentioned, they're leaving families behind. Uh, Oftentimes, it's just a mom with two small kids or even a dad holding down the fort, trying to get the kids to soccer here, their homework. They might have family close by. They might not. In my view, they're kind of like the unsung heroes in all of this because they're also making a sacrifice, trying to hold it together and trying to be this great emotional support for the whole family. Absolutely. So today um, we are absolutely honoring our veterans, but we're taking a little bit of time to look inside what a family is going through during this time. Megan Augustine is one of those moms making uh, this sacrifice. Megan, you are home alone. Your husband's away. You have two small children. And his deployment happened during a pandemic to boot. How are you doing? Hi, guys. Thanks for having me on. First of all, I really appreciate it. And I know my husband appreciates it, too. And all the military families that we that we know will certainly appreciate it. Thank you. Um, we are hanging in there. We um, have been... Uh, without Eric um, since the July 4th weekend. He left for his 11-month deployment. Um, and that was a huge adjustment. Um, I, you know, I think one of the hard things, I mean, obviously being in the pandemic is very difficult and kind of threw all of our plans up in the air. Everyone's plans, right? Um, you know, we had known about the deployment for about a year ahead of time. And so we had sort of planned for a normal life other than Eric being gone, right? Like the kids, we get up, go to work, go to daycare. Um, I had arranged for some help to help me in the evenings a little bit. And obviously when March hit, uh, we all went, oh boy, uh, Mm -hmm. this is all gonna get uh, turned on its head. And that's, that's what's happened. But you know, we're adjusting and we're hanging in there like everyone is right now, whether you have a spouse who's deployed or not. Yeah, that's a true story. But your girls are really little. So it must be not only more challenging because they expend a lot more energy, but how do you keep Eric, their dad, in the forefront during a time when, you know, they are just really little? What are you doing to keep the connection? So, yeah, you don't know how it's going to be until you just start living it. Um, I was concerned that the kids were too little to sort of understand. And of course, the baby who's just a year and a half years old does not understand, but um, my almost four-year-old, Noelle, does seem to understand as best as an almost four-year-old can. Um, We read a lot of books. Um, We have, you know, several checked out from the library and a whole list from Amazon that was recommended to us before he left. And we do FaceTime. I mean, we're able to get on and, and do through different apps that are a little more secure than typical apps we would use. Um, and we can do FaceTime and the connections have actually been really good. And my kids have become extremely good at FaceTime and they just grab the phone and walk with their dad. And um, he probably gets a little bit dizzy on the other end, but he really appreciates the fact that his girls want to talk to him every single day. And sometimes we talk twice a day. So that's a good thing. That's wonderful that they're able to uh, stay connected like that. You know, Uh, Your husband is making a sacrifice and all members of the military make this great sacrifice and they're gone for such a, you know, extended period of time. You said he's going to be gone for 11 months, but you're also making a sacrifice and and we need to honor you and and recognize you. And I want to know, how are you holding up? I I know you're, you have to be strong for your girls. You don't have any close family uh, close by. How are you doing? How are you holding up? Well, thank you for asking that. That's very nice of you, and I appreciate that. Um, 
you know, you have your good days and your bad days. Um, you know, there's, I'd be lying if I said there wasn't days where you, where you cry, you do, um, you know, but I don't know. I mean, I work full time. I've got a, a new house. We moved into a new house before he left. So I've sort of with him virtually been working on lots of projects around the house. One thing I've really noticed that I definitely wanted to mention is that I don't think I've ever used a screwdriver <laughs> as much as actually I never used a screwdriver before my husband left. So I think like the positive spin on all this, and I've really been like trying because I can be like, I'm not the most positive person on the universe, but I really have been trying to think of ways that this deployment will help all of us, my family, myself. I've become so much more self-sufficient. Things that I would ask my husband to do and sometimes wait and wait and wait for him to do, I just do it now. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I, I'm i proud of that. And that's been, you know, there's been lots of things that, you know, we've been able to learn together, my girls and I. And uh, my, I know my husband is happy about it too. Every little thing that I fix, I call him and tell him. And he's like, wow, I guess I, I don't have to do anything when I get back. No, that was not the point. No. <laughs> but that that's what I was going to say. I would be like, you're going to have a honey do list this month. <laughs> yeah. But exactly. I'm doing, I'm doing, you know, I'm doing as well as can be expected. And really, I talk to other moms, both who have um, spouses deployed as well as just moms and dads in the pandemic. And really, our list of um, issues that arise are, are pretty identical. So, everyone I know, like everyone is having such a hard time right now. And it really is like the little tiny things. Like last night I put the kids in bed, um, early and was able to run the Roomba. (laughs) (laughs) Celebrate (laughs) the small victories, right? I get it. And I think that that's like a universal thing that anybody who's listening and you know, maybe their spouse isn't deployed, but is an essential worker and is back on the front lines and can't come home. But for those who are specific military families, you know, you're learning firsthand that it's an all around sacrifice. And for those of us who have never had this experience, and I won't, I I just don't, I didn't have it in my family with my parents. I don't have it with my own spouse. What snapshot can you provide on the value of really appreciating military families? Oh, and I see oh, a little we one saw behind a little you. One. We I saw love a little it. One Your big serious <laughs> question. She walks in, right? That's good. That's good. It lightens the mood. But you know, what do you want folks to really understand and appreciate um, this Veterans Day? Um, I just think remembering that we do have many, many men and women, very brave men and women, who are still serving overseas. Um, I think people forget, you know. (laughs) I love it. I think people forget, you know. Um, We've been, you know, in and out of different foreign engagements, you know, for the better part of 20 years. And when you start talking about people being deployed, um, especially to the Middle East where Eric is, people say, why? You know, is that still a thing? It is. And um, it doesn't matter where you're deployed to. It doesn't matter if you're deployed or, or working in the military within the United States. Um, I think that um, it's just important to remember. And I know people do because when I show my military ID at the Home Depot or wherever else where you get your little discount, people always thank me. I think the difference for me now is that people used to thank me. This is Eric's first deployment. And I remember people thanking me years ago and me saying, I didn't do anything. Um, And now I just say, of course, you're welcome. You know, I don't mind saying it now because, you know, it's his turn. It's our turn. And this is what comes with with serving. And um, yeah, I just, I, I appreciate people's reactions. And across the board, people are supportive. Nobody is unsupportive. So that goes a long way. That's wonderful to hear that. Um, that little stinker's behind you. Where did she go? She's, she's under the desk. <laughs> oh, she's she under the desk now. Of course she is. Right. For people who are just tuning into a podcast, we do have um, a little one in the room. So if they're wondering what our reaction is. Intruder reactions alert. Are. Intruder alert. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> she's got a good interview for you. There she is. Little Hi, Pebble. Noelle. Hi, Noelle. Hi, Noelle. Can you wave? Can you wave? <laughs> She's going to think about it. 
Megan, one final question. Um, the holidays are coming up. And speaking of Noelle, this is going to be her first Thanksgiving without her daddy, her first Christmas. Um, Natalie is still little and doesn't quite understand. How are you going to get through the holiday season and what are you going to do? Well, that's a good, very good question. Uh, we are missing the big holidays this year with daddy and, and all the birthdays. Um, and my husband's favorite holiday is Thanksgiving and his birth, he was born on Thanksgiving and this year his birthday, uh, lands on Thanksgiving. So that's going to be really hard for us. And then, you know, layer on top of that, the fact that we don't know, like in what capacity we'll be able to see our family, my parents, um, it's hard with the pandemic on top of it. So at this point, we don't know what we're doing. Um, we know that we will be together and these girls have three older stepbrothers and, and they'll be around too. And, and that's been really helpful. Um, so, you know, we'll just get through it. Um, we kind of look at the holidays so far as a countdown to daddy coming home. Mm -hmm. And so um, like this little one has no concept of 11 months. I hardly have a concept of 11 months. So we just talk about it. Sometimes we, we're going to have your birthday, right? And then we're going to have, or we're going to have Halloween and then your birthday and Thanksgiving and Christmas, right? And then we'll have baby sister's birthday and mommy's birthday. And soon after that, daddy will be home. And that's how we say it. I love, love that. It. Great <laughs> attitude. Megan, thank you so much um, for sharing your story with us. Thank you for the sacrifice that you're making for all of us. Right. And um, Godspeed to Eric, and we wish everyone the very best, and we hope he comes home safe and soon. Thank you. Thank you so much, ladies. So good to see you. Thank you. Well, I love that Megan has such a great attitude, and I'm sure that there are days where <laughs> they're really difficult. But you know what? I think she does represent a lot of military families. They just think about it. They're really strong. They're really resilient, and they kind of know what they're getting into. But I just love that we were able to hear from her today, and she liked that we asked her, how you doing? Well, I'm sure no one asks her that. I'm sure her husband gets all of the attention. How's he doing? And he should, but she also deserves kudos uh, for, for keeping it together, to keeping these kids, two little kids on track, and, and she's doing a tremendous job. So thank you to all of our military families and to all members of the military Thank you for your service. Thank you for the sacrifices that you've made and happy Veterans Day.